we connect. <laughs> okay. uh, I think you're on. Okay. Hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday, February 8th, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Kat Ludwig, Stephanie Pepper. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Cooking with Kat and Steph. <laughs> I haven't said that in a while, so I, I was just it. watching one of our videos. I feel videos like I'm watching PBS. I know. I kind of like it. So we're talking today about one of my favorite topics ever. I love okay. carbohydrates. I love carbs, too. And for sure, they're good for you. So if someone tells you carbs are bad for you, I'm going to explain to you today why you should eat carbs. All right. So I did the uh, origin of the word protein last week. Yes. That one was easier to remember. So I looked this one up and I'm going to have to read it off of my notes because yeah. it's a little more complicated. So carbohydrate comes from the Greek word water, which is hydro, and carbo, which is carbon. This one's not as exciting as the protein. So carb, which means carbon, and hydro, which means water, are put together to make a carbohydrate. Huh. So basically, it's a chain of carbon with equal parts water molecules on the end. So CHO. So in nursing homes and hospitals, if someone's on a consistent carbohydrate diet, we call it a CCHO diet. Oh, makes sense. Because CHO stands for carbon, hydrogen, and water. Uh, that's my nerd talking also. Well, so, you know, keep being a nerd. <laughs> I, I depend should, on it. I should have worn my, my nerd shirt that says putting the RD in nerd. Anyway. Um, try hovering over it and see if it'll show. I did. If you're on and you're saying, if you're watching, please say hi and tell us where you're from and yes. ask any questions if you have them as they come along. You're popular. No. It's okay. All right. So we're going to make rice and we're going to make some quinoa. So they're both carbohydrates. So quinoa is a strange little grain. There are different colors of quinoa. So as you can see, I have the black quinoa here and then I have the multicolored. If you have dysphagia and you are trying to incorporate quinoa into your diet, do not buy this colored or black quinoa. You wanna get the white quinoa because it's a little bit softer. Um, the black quinoa is very, very hard. The only way I have seen to cook it properly is to pressure cook it. So. So if you have dysphagia, don't get the black quinoa. You want the white quinoa because it's softer. So no, I've seen red quinoa. Is that? Red quinoa, I think, is in between the two. Okay. But I haven't ever bought just plain red quinoa. So hopefully with this, we'll, it's mixed. we'll see what happens because okay. this is the mix. So we're also going to do beans with our rice because beans are also very high in carbohydrates. Part of that carbohydrate is fiber, which I'm going to talk about here in a little bit. But also the great thing about these two together is they make a complete protein. So that was last week. So if you're, if you have a question about what complete protein means, watch last week, last week. So carbohydrates are made by plants. Proteins are made by animals, plants, everything, but carbohydrates specifically are made by plants hmm. through the process of creating life, basically. Nice. Um, they are a main source of energy for human beings. Uh, for animals, not so much. Most animals are, uh, uh, well, I, I retract that statement. Some animals are carnivores and they eat meat. They do need a little bit of carbohydrate, which is why you'll see dogs like eating grass sometimes. Mm -hmm. Carbohydrate. We can't digest it, so don't go eat grass. Deal. <laughs> Um, so there are three categories of carbohydrates. These are monosaccharides, which means one single carbohydrate, mm -hmm. disaccharides, which means two carbohydrates put together, and then poly, which is like a chain. So monosaccharides would be like, um, I'm tossing one of those apples. Uh, fruit is high in fructose, which is a monosaccharide really easy to digest, but your, your body still wants to turn that into glucose. 
Um, and then galactose is a monosaccharide that is part of the molecule that makes up lactose in milk. Um, and then you have disaccharides. So like uh, sucrose, which is table sugar, is a disaccharide. It's made up of um, fructose and I want to say, oh gosh, I'm going to forget and show my ignorance. That's okay. I'll get back to you on that one. Um, and then lactose, which is also made of galactose. And then we have maltose, which is not a common sugar. And then you have polysaccharides. And what this means is that they are typically chains of 10 single sugars put together in a chain. And this is where your fiber comes from. Also, starches. So um, potato is a starch. It it's a chain of like 10 sugars put together. But this also goes for corn, arrowroot, all of your what we would call thickeners are all polysaccharides or starches. Hmm. So um, there, there's we, we're not going to dive into the chemistry, even though I'm a nerd and I could people are interested in that, though. So, um, OK, so animals use sugar or carbs to keep our blood sugar in our body stable between our meals. So when a person has diabetes, we always recommend that they eat a consistent amount of carbohydrate three times a day. And this is so the body can get used to processing a specific amount of sugar so that your blood sugar doesn't spike and then drop. So you don't have those severe highs and severe lows because mm -hmm. people feel like crap when your blood sugar is too high or too low. Mm -hmm. um, and then to make sure that your sugar is available, your muscles can store carbohydrate short term in a form called glycogen. Your liver also stores glycogen as well. And your liver processes it to keep your blood sugar stable when you're not eating, if you don't have enough in your body, typically preventing low blood sugar. Okay. So your liver's really, really important. It's really important to keep your liver healthy. Um, your muscles only store glycogen for about 18 hours. So if you don't, don't eat for more than 18 hours, that's when you stop burning the sugar that you have stored in your body and your body moves on to store or to burning fat and protein. So if you don't have enough sugar in your body, your muscle mass will start to break down and your fat stores will start to break down and you'll use that for energy instead. Um, if it's in your muscle, you can't use it quickly. It takes time. In your liver, you can use it quickly. Okay. Um, we don't want your your muscles to break down. We want what's in your muscles to be there for when you need it. When you're working out, that's when you would need that that sugar in your muscles per se. Um, so your liver, super important organ. It's responsible for keeping your blood sugar stable. Um, and then. What about starches? So starches are, I mean, who doesn't love French fries, right? Potatoes are delicious. I'm an Irish girl. I love me some French fries. Mm. They're starch. Starches are what we call poorly digested if they're eaten raw. Nobody wants to eat a raw potato. True. I've seen my father do it. Yeah. If he, if he's watching, he'll let you know, he'll let me know if I'm correct or incorrect in that statement. Um, I've seen him eat some weird things though. So I, I, I got off track. So, okay. So we have rice. So we have arborio here, which is a short grain rice. This is a type of starch that sort of, uh, I want to say this in, in the right way. You cook arborio differently than you cook normal rice. So the rice we're going to use today, it was, you probably boiled water, added it to it, put it on low, and then let it cook for a specific amount of time and then fluffed it when it had absorbed all the water. Yeah, it was plain white rice. Plain white rice. Mm -hmm. This rice, you add liquid and you stir while cooking and then you add more liquid and you stir and you add more liquid and you stir. So this is so it gets super starchy and thick. Um, thank you. We're having tea again because it's anti-inflammatory. 
We're all about that anti-inflammatory lifestyle. Sometimes. <laughs> we try. That's we try. the direction we're going right now. Yes. Especially when it's kind of flu season. Right. We're trying to stay well. That's eat our true. protein, drink our tea, eat our fruits and vegetables, and eat enough carbohydrate so your body doesn't burn the protein that it needs. So when you cook a starch, it absorbs water and it swells and it what kind of uh, what we call gelatinizes. It gets soft and then it ruptures. So it breaks open and can cook the inside, which is where the starch is. So the outside is typically the fibrous part. And then inside is, hi, whoever sent the hearts. We love you too. Um, and so through this cooking process, it makes it more digestible. So you don't wanna eat raw rice, raw potatoes, raw quinoa, because your body just can't digest them. So you wanna cook them. Um, and this takes planning and, and time. So you wanna make sure you have enough time. Um, you, you can cook and freeze rice so that it's more or less easier to he reheat, but then you have to thaw it out. So planning, planning, very important. Okay, so what about the fiber part? Because we're doing quinoa. Quinoa, as I think I mentioned last week, super high in protein, also very high in fiber. For a grain so a quarter cup of quinoa has 29 grams of carb which is two servings it's only technically one well two servings and I think this is dried so cooked it's closer to a half a cup it's got six grams of protein it's got three grams of fiber which is pretty darn good so why is fiber important important well it's the intact plant part that your body can't digest. So it acts kind of like a scrub brush and it keeps your insides clean and moving so that nothing sticks around and gets weird. You don't want weirdness in your gut, it's not healthy. Um, so there are different kinds of fiber. So your, your fruit has what we would call soluble fiber and your other harder vegetables and um, some of your grains have this non-digestible fiber. Okay. You need both. This one absorbs water. This is like the scrub brush that cleans you out. Super, super helpful. Carbs are very, very important. And this helps with your cholesterol. It can lower your cholesterol if you eat enough fiber. So I'm going to try not to get into the weeds here because I, I added some notes here that are a little more complicated. So I'm okay. not gonna get into some of that. If someone's interested in the technical parts, let me know, we can have that conversation. I can talk about it all, all day yeah, long. Ask the questions. Um, yeah, sure, so if you sure. have questions, let me know. Um, and I, so I did wanna talk about one type of fiber that people are sort of demonizing and that's called carrageenan. Have you heard of it? Uh -huh. what, what do you know about it? Or what have you heard about it? You're putting me on the spot now. No. I you heard may... it's not good for you. I, I think. I've heard that too. But nobody really knows why. So carrageenan is a type of fiber that is made from seaweed. Okay. And it thickens a little tiny bit. Okay. It doesn't thicken like rice or, or cornstarch or wheat flour thickens. It just thickens a little tiny bit. And so they put it in things like infant formula which weirds people out because we're not sure that, you know, our babies should be eating things like that. Um, but we also put it in ice cream, sour cream, especially when we take fat out, we have to put something else in that makes it have that feel mm -hmm. because our dairy is supposed to feel a certain way, right? It's supposed to have a certain amount of fat in it. So if you take it out, you need to replace that mouthfeel with something and carrageenan is typically what replaces that texture. Okay. So, uh, good or bad, I'll let you decide, but it's a carbohydrate. Okay. Made from seaweed. Seaweed. I like, is... and I'm a fan of seaweed, so. <laughs> I, I, I like it in sushi. I like it in sushi also. Um, okay, so how do we digest carbs? So, carb digestion starts in your mouth. So we talked about our 
our process of swallowing, when you eat, you start to salivate, right? This is part of the process of swallowing. Well, one of those things that that saliva does is it has an enzyme in it mm -hmm. called salivary amylase that helps start to break down carbohydrates in your mouth. So you may notice if you eat something like a saltine cracker, if you chew it a little bit and leave it in your mouth, it'll start to taste sweet. And that's because your salivary amylase is starting to break down those carbohydrates a little bit so that when they get to your gut, they're a little bit easier for your pancreatic amylase to break down. Wow. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Starts in your mouth. So try it. If, if you can put a little bit of some kind of carbohydrate in your mouth, you don't have to swallow it, put it in your mouth, chew it just a little bit, let your saliva do its thing, and just notice what it feels like and what it tastes like. Hmm. I will. Just, just kind of a fun experiment. So then it gets to your stomach, it mixes with all the other things. The, the hydrochloric acid that breaks down protein doesn't do anything to carbs. So then they pass into your small intestine and the pancreatic amylase goes to work and starts cutting those long chains of carbs into smaller monosaccharides. Okay. The one that we use in our body is glucose. So when we have someone who's diabetic, we'll feed them like glucose gel. And that's because glucose, your body doesn't have to break down. It can just use right away to bring your blood sugar back up. So um, your body uses glucose for every activity in your body. Um, after after your, your small intestine breaks down into glucose and it gets absorbed in your body, any of those non-digestible carbohydrates, like the fiber, that keep going through your gut, they get worked on by bacteria or probiotics which sometimes we supplement if we have the wrong ones in our body. So the other thing that some of these carbohydrates have is prebiotics, mm -hmm. which is fiber, basically. So you may hear that you need prebiotics for your probiotics because the probiotics eat prebiotics, and that keeps you healthy. That's so confusing. Let's just eat. <laughs> just eat. Hey, that, that's a good point. If you can just eat. I recommend that. You don't need to know all this stuff. That's my job. But so our job <laughs> is to help get this stuff into you. Yes. In a way that you can digest it. Yes. And your body can benefit from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that's, we see a lot of people who can, do you like it? I do like it. I'll drink it. Good. You can have the whole box. Deal. I'll drink okay. it. Um, so a lot of people that we see have such a limited range of things that they can swallow mm -hmm. that they may not have, they may, they actually may be overweight because their body's not processing properly because they're not eating enough of the right things. Yeah. So, and I mentioned it, I think last week with the protein, your body needs B vitamins in order to make amino acids. So if you're not getting enough protein in, your body can make amino acids with other things that you're eating. But if you don't have the, the vitamins, B vitamins, vitamin C, vitamins A, D, E, K, all your minerals, etc., mm -hmm. you can't process other things that your body needs. Your body can't process glucose and protein if you don't have the right vitamins and minerals in your body. And... We were talking about this with one other person this past week that your body will steal it from other places, other places, other mm -hmm. organs or mm -hmm. yeah. And then those, those tissues like your muscles, including your heart muscle can start to break, break down. down. Mm -hmm. And so we want to replenish that so that we're putting good things back into your body. So your body can rebuild and the, the reason I love carbs so much, aside from the fact that I like the way they taste and they make me feel a little bit fuller, mm. and then I'm not as hungry because they stick with me a little longer, is because of the fiber. But they're also full of vitamins and minerals. These, these carbohydrates, and I ha we don't have any vegetables out here, but vegetables are made from plants. They're very high 
Well, we, we do. We have some beans. We have some beans. That's true. Those fill a lot of... Beans are amazing because they do fill a lot of holes. Protein, fat, and carb. Um, you need these vitamins and minerals that we're getting from carbohydrates. Fruits and vegetables are full of vitamins and minerals. So if you're not able to get them in, what do you do? For a lot of our people, we recommend a multivitamin mm -hmm. just so we can try to get something good in because you're probably not getting it in your diet, especially if you're only eating like three or four things. Um, and while that's fine to keep you alive, we want you to have quality of life and be better. We don't want you to just be alive. We want you to live. So I, I have all this information for you because I want you to know that we can normalize this and teach you how to get these foods back in your body. So we're going to try to blend some quinoa. I do have some more notes. Um, but, but let's, let's blend some things. Okay. Do you want to start with the beans and rice or do you want to start with the quinoa? I think we should start with the beans and rice. Okay. So this is just some leftover rice, Spanish rice mm -hmm. and some red beans. Mm -hmm. We have some, some vegetable broth here. So if nothing else, you can have a complete meal with just beans and rice. Mm -hmm. We do have an avocado here because it's starting to, to ripen. Um, I do want to add avocados, super great source of carbohydrate and fat. But and we'll talk about fat next week. Good fat. Good fat. Yeah. But we'll you, you've seen that. the meme. I, you, you said I was fat. I, I said you're a good fat. It's a good fat. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this. So funny. All um, right. All right. It is. It is a real soft avocado. This is gonna blend so well. Okay. Um. So there is more fiber in an avocado than most other vegetables. I think really? technically it's a fruit, actually. But yes, because it has a it has a pit. Um, and, and it flowers. I think that's the other rule. Oh, it's beautiful too. Look at that. Oh, gorgeous. Oh, wow. You couldn't have picked a better day to use this avocado. I'm glad that we had something to use it for. I know. So it also adds some nice texture. It blends really smooth. Um, so rice, um, what else do you have in this rice? It looks like just just a little, it's got a little red hint it, to it, so a little tiny bit of tomato sauce. Probably not enough if you have GERD to, to mess it's with you. It's actually my homemade salsa. I just made rice with salsa in it. It's good salsa too. Okay, so. So there's probably probably some. Um, anytime. Too. Okay, so anytime you blend a starch or a carbohydrate, you're gonna need extra liquid. So we have some broth, okay? Starches absorb liquid. Beans, because they started out probably dried, most beans are dried and then sent to the marketplace. Um, these did come out of a can, but I guarantee you they were probably dried at one point. Um, these also absorb liquid. So you're gonna need to add extra liquid. Equal parts rice to beans? What's the um, ratio? I don't know that we have a ratio. Why don't we do two to one? Two to one what? Two rice to one beans. And I say this because you already have the rice in there. Because then we can always add a little more beans. Because the beans have a stronger flavor, but they're also going to blend really smooth. So let's see how that looks. That looks great. Okay. Let's try it out. I'm excited. Okay. I'm definitely going to need some liquid here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So beans and rice are the perfect marriage of foods. They're used in many cultures and they complement each other so well. So just for reference, I filled with the um, vegetable stock to the level of the rice. The rice is already cooked. Mm -hmm. Yes. And if you overcook your rice, it's okay. It's actually probably a little better. Yeah. For this, it's better. 
Just because it was getting a little bit stuck there at mm -hmm. the end. Yeah, and too thick is not good for your blender. Or rather, it just doesn't do anything. Okay. Just want to get some of that down. Mm -hmm. The beauty of these is they're not that loud. Yeah. So kidney beans, rice, and vegetable, vegetable broth. stock. Yeah. Broth. Stock, broth, whichever. We could go into semantics one again, but I won't I won't torture you. Well, they look smooth. It looks smooth, yeah. Oh, that tastes quite lovely. Mm. Now the beans, because it is a kidney bean, it has a thicker skin. Mm-hmm. So if you can't handle, also, we didn't heat those, did we? So I think if you heat them in a little bit of the broth and add them, they might soften. blend just a tiny bit softer. But it's really not a lot. It's not. It's actually, it has a tiny bit of texture, but I don't think it's enough to really get caught. But I also think with a little more stock mm -hmm. and another blend, it could be smoother. I agree. But I, I agree, if the beans were warm. Mm -hmm. I didn't warm the beans. And that's okay. Let's put some uh, some avocado mm. in it. Let's do it. Let me grab the beans. Um, so women need about 30 to 60 grams of carbohydrate at each meal. And typically we say that's three meals a day. I realize not everyone eats three meals a day. That's just a general rule of thumb. Um, and then men need more than that. I'm interested to see if there's any men on. I'm, I'm gonna guess they're mostly women. So if you're a guy and you wanna know, uh, say me in the chat so that I can answer that question. Um, okay. A little more liquid. Yep. It's pretty thick too. I'm gonna actually put water because that's getting it's getting a little salty. It is it is pretty strong, but that's some people need the salt. Hey, hey, Shannon, if you don't have butter, I can buy this. Use cream of rice or rice babies. That's a great suggestion. Yes. Um, so the other thing is you can always use some rice flour also. Yeah, that's a great suggestion, Shannon. That avocado really made it thick. It did. So your, your amount of your carbohydrate intake can also affect the level of fat or triglycerides in your body. So if your carbohydrate intake is too high and it's above what your body needs, it's gonna cause your blood fat levels to increase also. And that's because it overwhelms your liver and then your liver produces extra fat because it's got to do something with that extra sugar. Um, so we talked about your body breaking down your protein if you don't have enough carbs. If you, if you don't have enough carbs in your body, your body will use other things to make carbohydrates. So that kind of leads me into the idea of the keto diet or ketosis, which has been really popular the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. I am not a fan of it um, because I think it's really hard on the body and it's not. it was not meant to be a weight loss tool. It was meant to help control epilepsy in children. So, and that was very, very strict to like 
90% fat, 4% carbs, and 6% protein. Mm. So it's very, very limiting. So the keto diet, I looked it up on one of the, the um, like PubMed research sites. The actual keto diet is supposed to be 55 to 60% fat, 30 to 35% protein, and 5 to 10% carbohydrate. Mm. Your body needs carbohydrate to break down fat. So if you, if your body wants to burn fat, but it doesn't have carbohydrate, it's harder to do. Hmm. And that's when you go into what's called ketosis, which creates ketones, which for someone with diabetes or who's an alcoholic, this can be life threatening. So it's very, very important for you to talk to your doctor before you decide to do the keto diet. Yeah. How does it taste? Um, taste it. It. The avocado has given it that mm. it's super smooth, so smooth, mm. and mm. it's given the avocado has given it that earthy smoothie like consistency. Mm. That's these these four ingredients. That's a good combination. That is really good. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's a I good. I could heat that up and eat it like a soup. You absolutely could make that into a soup. That's, that's a, good. People. That's a great idea, and that's a that's a quick, easy recipe. Um, Shannon, if you don't have the blender, you're right. You can use cream of rice cereal instead, and that will be the right True. consistency. Oh, excellent! Yeah, I hadn't thought of that, so thank you. Um, what else did I want to say? Oh, so the body always wants to stay in balance. So if you don't put enough of the right nutrient into your body, it will try to burn something in order to get your body to be back in balance um but at some point if you make it do that too long it's not good for you and it will cause some problems so it's really important we we really want you to get 45 to 65 percent of your calories from carbohydrate we want you to also have an adequate amount of fiber in those carbohydrates women need about 25 grams of fiber a day men need almost 40. Isn't that kind of astounding? Wow. Yeah. So get your fiber. Um, functional fiber is what we would consider like Metamucil. And that's an extreme example. So you would take that in order to supplement your fiber because it's removed from something else so that you can just take the fiber separately. Oh. Really helpful for some people. It can help with your cholesterol can help with your digestion. Typically we recommend it for digestion and making sure your, your gut is moving the right speed and not too fast or too slow. Gotcha. Um, so excess sugar, not helpful. We really want you to get your, your carbohydrate from high quality sources. Um, I'm going to start on the quinoa. Do you want to mm -hmm. show some of our other examples of carbohydrates that we have here? Sure. So awesome. um, we've got two different kind of couscous. We've got curled couscous. Um, I use this to make salads, like cold salads in the summertime or winter, whenever you'd mm -hmm. like. The rest of that avocado actually may make a nice. Oh, yeah, that sounds. And that might nice even puree salad. nicely if it, you're trying to make a pureed pasta salad. Avocado as your like. Yeah. That'd be really good. And then um, this is a very much smaller couscous, mm -hmm. it's much smaller grain. Uh, the other one that I have is polenta, AKA grits. Mm -hmm. And what I want to say about polenta is when I make polenta at home, it's usually like four to five parts of water to one part of polenta. So you have it, it you eat it like a cereal. Yeah. It, we, we do it a little softer, mm -hmm. um, so it's more like a, a puree. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not pureed, you can puree it because it's it's pretty gritty. Um, it yes. can absorb six times its weight in water. Yes. It's hearty and takes a long time to cook. It usually takes us about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, that's when I put my husband to work stirring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's, he's a chef too. He's a so. chef. He knows how to do it. He knows how to do that. So uh, grits. Yeah. Or polenta. Yeah. I know um, 
Yes, anyway. Well, another one that I have that I make salads out of is a small pasta called orzo. And I think that if you have ever eaten rice aroni, mm -hmm. uh, it's rice and mm -hmm. orzo mm -hmm. pasta mm -hmm. or something similar to orzo pasta. So if you have trouble with rice, uh, the orzo may blend a little bit easier, mm -hmm. a little bit smoother than yeah. rice would. And you can use any pasta sauce True. that you want with it. Yeah. And it'll blend pretty smooth. Yeah. So with this quinoa, we're going to do sort of a sweeter version. Do you have any cinnamon? Can I have yes. some, please? I'm not sure where it's at. <laughs> so we're going to add vanilla oat milk to our quinoa. 45 minutes to cook. Yes, Karen. It takes quite a while and it gets really, really thick. So if it's something you want to try, I recommend extra vanilla. Yeah. Heck yeah. Threaten me with a good time. Okay. Um, it, it can always use a little bit of extra liquid, even after it's cooked all the way, you may want to thin it out with a little bit more liquid. Um, one of my favorite things to do is use polenta for breakfast with like a little bit of tomato sauce and, um, like my egg on top and a little bit of like soft cheese. Um, it makes a nice high protein, high fiber breakfast. breakfast. Yeah. Sounds amazing. Ooh, that was a lot. Ooh, you wanna, I have wanna plenty. Hit me with some of that. How much? I don't know. Just a shake. Yeah, a shake. Perfect. Okay. So this is more of a dessert quinoa or breakfast quinoa. However you want to do it. And if you have a little bit of like unflavored or vanilla protein powder, you can put a tablespoon of that in there too, and then increase the protein a little bit. Oh. We're gonna see okay, how ready? smooth we can get it. What is very true, Shannon. You can get the instant. This might take a while. But it's blending, it's moving. It, the pieces are getting smaller and smaller. Yep. Yep. Totally agree, Shannon. That is, that is how we would eat it too. Yes. Shrimp and grits is one of my favorite. Yes. Yep. Okay. Well, when I was in Italy, we stayed with a family there and they made polenta with uh, uh, Does this smell good? beef meat. Oh, wow. That smells good. Kind of like the... rice pudding, but with quinoa. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. It's all right. Italian family with a... Well, we had polenta. Instead of pasta, they made polenta mm -hmm. and they put the sauce on the polenta. So that's a tomato yeah. based sauce. Yeah. Sounds delicious. Yeah. I may have to add a little more liquid to this because it's gonna thicken. It's gonna thicken like every other grain. It smells like a cookie. Like a sugar cookie. It does. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious about let me grab another spoon. It's gonna taste that like one has beans and rice on it. Well, we didn't add any sweetener, but we could add. But the the oat milk has some. some. Oh yeah, that's thick. It's not smooth, but it's not hard pieces either. So when I cooked the quinoa, it says to do one and a half cups of water to one cup of quinoa. And I did a little more water because I wanted it to have extra water. And there was no water left over. So I think I could have even overcooked it even more. Um, I'm going to add a little more. Pulling out the honey. Well, I, um, this honey is a little. Hard. A lot hard. <laughs> Let me see if I can get okay. that out. All my other honey is downstairs. That's okay. All right, I'm gonna blend this a little further. If you have any more questions, please let us know. It's crystallized. Just typical. Yeah, it happens to mine all the time. Okay. 
All right. You know what we didn't add to this that we tell people to add typically is a little bit of fat. If I had thought about it before I let the quinoa cool down, I would have put a little bit of your oil or butter. Butter would be better in this. Um, and just got it a little bit melted while it was still hot and then thrown it in here because it would blend even smoother mm -hmm. with a little bit of fat in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, it smells so good. And that honey added just a little hint of... Yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh, we're almost there. Oh, much smoother. Much smoother. It just needed more more liquid to... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... But I can see that that one is going to... Yeah, so... Take a little bit... Like it may we, not get... It's not going to get 100% smooth, I think. We could blend it two or three more times. It's pretty thick, as you can see. So you can eat this for, if you can tolerate a little bit of texture, this is going to be great for you. Um, it's high in fiber, high in carbohydrate, high in protein. None of those are bad things. And our oat milk has a little bit of fat in it, which is good. And if you can, if you can handle, uh, if you can do regular dairy, mm -hmm. I think half and half even. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or cream cheese. Or half and half and cream cheese. Yeah. That's a fantastic breakfast. And for those that are transitioning from super smooth to more texture, mm -hmm. this is great. Yeah. So we've got a couple of people that we're transitioning right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is a great recipe for that. And this sort of looks like pudding. That it, is so super smooth. It looks absolutely beautiful. You can kind of see it. And it's, I would say this is like a pudding thick consistency. So if you need it a little bit a bit thinner, really struggling with my words today. Just add some more. Add some more liquid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I So I just want to encourage you to keep trying. And I... For anyone that doesn't have a blender that can puree some of these things, if you need a pureed diet, I highly, highly, highly recommend you invest in a good blender. Mm -hmm. It's going to change the outcome of your foods and overall your health. Because if you need things super smooth, a blendjet does a pretty darn good job. Um, and it's... The, I think the lowest price on them is $49.99. And I'm pretty sure you can get them at Walmart, Target. I think my mom found one at Ross. Yeah. Extracts. Uh-huh. Totally agree. Mm -hmm. um, my, my grandma used to add butter extract to a lot of mm -hmm. her baked goods. So um, butter extract or um, almond extract, especially if you're doing like a dessert, would be really good. Can you click on that see more so I can see the rest of that comment? Mm -hmm. um, I, I totally agree, Shannon. Some of those things. Um, the other thing that we've talked about with some people is they can find like powdered flavored fruits. So you can add some of those in to enhance the flavor. Like raspberries don't go in smoothies we were just talking about this with one of our clients yesterday raspberries have seeds they're really hard to swallow i also don't like the texture in a smoothie especially if i want it to be smooth and it's got seeds in it mm -hmm. so if you can find some of those powders or i know you can get extracts of almost any citrus and all, all the extras mm -hmm. so yeah you can make it whatever yeah we flavors are your favorite Shannon, we use those when I worked in the restaurant a lot too. So I, I highly recommend. And you can find them at almost any grocery store in the baking aisle with the other mm -hmm. seasoning or with the seasoning. So yes, that's a fantastic recommendation. So if there are any other questions, please shoot them over to us. We're happy to answer them. If you need another idea for a recipe, some of these, um, so like the couscous, the orzo, those are more on the softer side. They're gonna puree a lot smoother. Very easy. 
The polenta, yes, is a long-term, when I say long-term, it's because it takes like an hour to cook. It's, it's a commitment to sit and cook it, but you can get a lot of flavor in polenta, mm -hmm. especially depending on the kind of liquid you use. Um, you can do it sweet, you can do it savory. Mm -hmm. um, you can always make like cornbread with your cornmeal, because polenta is technically cornmeal. Mm -hmm. And then you can put your a little extra milk just to soften it, and then it'll go down a little smoother. Yep. Um, so we've got all kinds of tips and tricks and and if you want us to try something that you haven't tried yet, we'll try it for you. We're happy to experiment. So let us know. I think I went through all the rest of my notes. So one of the things, just as a quick, mm -hmm. one person that we have um, is transitioning to more texture. Mm -hmm. And she really wanted like coffee cake or blueberry muffins. Yeah. And she was able to manage it by putting milk in with it so that when she took a bite of the coffee cake it she got extra milk with mm -hmm. it and it was softer it made it softer softer because it soaked it up and it just gave her a better mm -hmm. ability to and manage I it. and I think the extra moisture is a piece of that mm -hmm. right so that's something you know if you're wanting to increase your carbs mm -hmm. um, adds, in the right way add some liquid mm -hmm. and and yeah scoop through it yeah so the other thing that reminds me that I think we've told quite a few of our clients is that anytime you're having a drink that's water if you're getting too much water in and not enough food we want to add calories to your drinks so if you can supplement about that you could blend this with a protein shake. Like you could blend your rice or your quinoa with your favorite flavor of protein shake. Not talking like, I don't want you to go drink soda because soda is high in the wrong kind of calories and it can be really hard on your body. But we... Juice rather than straight water. Juice. At least there's some... Yeah, yeah. Juice. And apple juice are great juice. We would even consider juice to be a fruit source if it's 100% juice. So it would be considered a serving of fruit, but without the fiber. So there are always tips and tricks you can do in order to get more nutrients in. So if you have questions or need ideas, let us know. We have all kinds of ideas and thoughts, and mm -hmm. we talk about this every day. We love doing this so let us know what you need we're here to support you and Stephanie and I are taking on more clients as well right now yeah. so we have a few spots open we'd love to work with you and help change the direction of your story so let us know send us a, a comment or an email at dysphagia duo at gmail.com you can also find us on our website dysphagia duo.com that our our lovely marketing manager Hannah built for us she's she's and pretty great it's pretty great. in the process of building adding more every day so yep. yeah check out our website anyway let us know what you think we're here to support you have a great rest of your day everyone good All night right. I'm gonna eat a little more of do this. it <laughs>